Hey, what you doing? Oh, nothing. Just finishing the new update for Project Playtime. Oh, well, cancel that because the boss wants a new spin-off on Roblox. Wait, what? Yep. Wh wh when does he need this? Well, he wants it before the hype train for Chapter 3 dies out, so trailer tomorrow? What? Great! I knew I could count on you. <sighs> I got this. Done! So, Poppy Playtime Forever is a game. The game is basically Rainbow Friends, but we have Huggy Wuggy instead of Bluey, Inflatable, Tiny Dino, and Purple Guy. Honestly, this game kinda sucks. How has Poppy Playtime failed at making two spin-offs? Released on February 29th, 2024, just one month after the release of Poppy Playtime Chapter 3, and looking back on it six months later, it is absolutely dead in the water. Fish ain't biting, weather so damn hot, that guy's dead! Like, who is even playing this right now? Alright, so, spin-off has basically fallen off the face of the earth faster than you can say Winchester sauce. We need cheese to shiner sauce. War wars to shirt. Today, we are going to be taking a look at Poppy Playtime Forever to see why this copied and rushed game completely failed. But before we get into that, I should give a bit of a background on the game. Poppy Playtime Forever was made by Mob Games and also developed by Jazzwares Game Studio, which we'll get back to. This game is a non-canon spin-off that is on Roblox. This game was announced February 27th of 20 2024 and released February 29th. Alright, we've already come to our first problem with this game, and I haven't even talked about the gameplay. <laughs> I'm no master marketing CEO, but I'm pretty sure you need to space out your marketing, even if it's a Roblox game. All we got was a poster and a trailer all in the same day, and that was it. And mind you, once again, the promotion started two days before release. Usually, you should space out marketing so people can digest the game and figure out their expectations for the product and build hype. For example, the developer of Roblox Doors announced Doors in July 2022. Midway into August, they released it. And in between this month, they released two other trailers and a screenshot to build more hype. And people were hyped. Meanwhile, Poppy Playtime Forever just got dumped onto Roblox two days after announcing that. Like, what the fart? Yes, I will not let go of that fact. Poor marketing, I believe, definitely contributed to this game's failure. Honestly, I was expecting a lot from Mob Games at this point, with the recent release of Chapter 3 that was absolutely amazing. And I know it's just a Roblox game, but just because it's a Roblox game does not mean that we have to hold it below standards. We have great games come out of Roblox, like Doors, Dress to Impress, uh -huh. Rest in Peace Fashion Famous, Arsenal, and those were not developed by big name developers. Mob Games made Chapter oh my, oh my 3, oh and then this. Speaking of developers, Mob Games partnered with Jazzwares Game Studios, which I looked into, and it's just a toy company. They had also made two Roblox games, which are... <laughs> I tried out both, and one of them is literally just a copy of Adopt Me, but with Squishy Mellows, and the other, another Cobra Kai game, except this one is... What is wrong with you? Kind of bad, like, what happened to their faces? But that's really about it that they have in the game catalog. There are two different modes that you can play. There's main campaign and build a level. They've added more, and I haven't really done build a level or the others, so I'm not really gonna touch on those. But first of all, the main campaign is so short. It takes me longer to boot up Fortnite on my PS5 than to finish this campaign. Did they make it action-packed while we played? No, not really. The lore goes for this game that you and a group of nine other people are in the sewers trying to film the experience of a Playtime co-facility for your YouTube channel. Um, speaking of YouTube channels, you should totally make sure you guys like and subscribe to my channel if you uh, are enjoying this video. Wink wink, nudge nudge. <clears throat> Anyways, you then find a keycard, which lets you into- You then find this yellow Siri who wants you to stay and then you gotta collect parts and stuff to get out. Yes, this part is literally just Rainbow Friends. Granted, you only repeat this part two or three times. And then you gotta do a couple puzzles, which, you know, at least they did something new. 
Once you're inside the manager's office, Yellow Siri comes back and you play a bit of whack-a-mole and then shut our banana AI down. And that is literally it. Yeah, kind of disappointing. It really doesn't seem like a lot of thought was put into this game because it has a 20 minute long campaign and it just copies ideas from other popular Roblox games. You got the Rainbow Friends Find a Peace gameplay, then the Doors kind of chase scene, and then you got the, the Project Playtime puzzles, and then Whack-A-Mole, which is kind of unique, but like, it's in every horror game. You would expect for two actual game studios coming together that they would make something new and unique on this platform to really show you can make great things on Roblox. You know, it's really all coming together. That's probably why Poppy Playtime Forever feels like a game that is not unique in the slightest, because Mob Games partnered with a game studio that isn't known for their uniqueness. Both games that they've made just copy other games. Corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. They're the same picture. They said that this game was in the work for about a year, but I don't believe that for a second this game is so short and buggy. Yes, bugs in this game were so bad at launch. I'll see if I can find any gameplay to show in the background for the bugs, but I started playing Poppy Playtime forever after the bugs were fixed, but oh my lorsh, this game was so unpolished. I wouldn't believe you if you said they worked on this for two weeks. Is this how you get your sick kicks? What? It's just an ordinary crabby. Oh my god! So, my theory is that they saw the success of Chapter 3, and they thought there was going to be a lot of Google searches for Poppy Playtime, so they were like, why update our existing spin-off game that players want updated that and that we hyped up so much, when instead, we could just make another game on a platform that basically all of our younger fan base is on? Which, I mean, I get the idea of making another game that's a lot more accessible to everybody, because, I mean, come on, who doesn't love Roblox? And if you say you don't, you better take that back. My real problem with the game is that that this game has been updated more than the actual spin-off that a lot of care went into. So far in Pod Playtime Forever, they added PvP, which basically just makes the game Project Playtime by having someone else be able to play Huggy, Mommy Longlegs, Boxy Boo, or Catnap, and Catnap isn't even in the actual game people want him in. They also added roleplay. Okay, I don't know what to think of that. But I really don't like that they put more attention into this non-canon rushed Roblox spin-off than the actual spin-off everyone loved and care was put into. But even with this more attention and them making it like Project Playtime, no one is playing this. This game is not unique, and nobody really cares about this game anymore because they made it just a worse version of Project Playtime, rushed and all. I knew this game was going to fail the second I started playing it. This game has not aged well, and no one even knows it's aging. The current players right now, as of recording, are 275. <laughs> Meanwhile, Rainbow Friends 2, which came out last year, has 21.1 thousand players. It's safe to say that this game has completely fallen off because you really can't get somewhere when you rush out a copied and forgotten mess. Thanks for watching, and ciao ciao for now.